welcome to Keep It Weird, the podcast for all things strange and unusual, hairy and scary, wickedly talented, and everything in between. Each week we get together to chat about something weird. And this week is no exception. There will be monsters of all shapes and sizes. We'll be exploring the deepest depths of our bodies in a non-sexual way. And we may even be put on a case to solve some true crime. You truly never know where this show will go, so it's best to make sure that you are prepared for anything. So grab your thickest gloves. Trust me, you'll need them. Make sure you've got your sleep masks ready, and fire retardant clothing wouldn't hurt. It's time to get weird. My name is Ashley, and this is my co-host, Lauren. Hello, weirdos. Hi. Another killer intro from Ashley. If just... I could learn how to mm, talk. Mm, mm. Uh, you know, well, it could be the flamingo. Blame it on the tequila. Blame it on the Apparently a- I'm an advertisement. A- 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 alcohol. <laughs> I'm like, when you get to YouTube, our logo's not allowed, like the same way with other videos. Oh, I'm man, like, oh no, I'm not meaning. I need to get it. Whatever. This, I'll turn it this, this way. This show is sponsored by KPCC and P-C-C. Aldi. C-C. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> Listen to KPCC while you go shop at Aldi. Shop at Aldi. <laughs> Yeah. Hi, weirdos. Hi. I actually do have a little bit of business to get through today. I've got three important things. One. Love it. Make sure you send in your Keep It Weird Funniest Moments for next month's flashback episode. We've gotten a handful, but I want to hear what you have to say. I want to make sure everyone's favorite funny moments are included. Number two, we have some limited edition Keep It Weird Team Orca 2023 shirts available in our T They're Public so store, which you can find by going to keepitweirdpodcast.com slash merch. So if you want to support our Orca friends and their newfound revenge quest, grab yourself one of those um, before they are gone. And finally, mm-hmm. I have gas. That is big news. (laughs) My third thing. Breaking news. (laughs) Breaking news. (laughs) You may have noticed, Lauren, I don't even think you know this yet. So surprised. What? We have ads in our episodes now. We held off for as long as we could, but eventually the ads come for us all. Okay? They they sure do. They do. We held off for almost seven years. That's not bad. That's actually pretty good. Point is, though, if you're interested in getting every episode from henceforth, from this episode on, ad-free, all you have to do is head to our Patreon at www.patreon.com slash keepitweirdpodcast and donate $5 or more a month, and you'll get access to ad-free episodes. Plus, you'll get the bonus episodes, the newsletter every month on top of the ad-free app, so it's kind of a banger of a deal. It's the best. You know that, like, no one likes an ad, Okay. I get it. I'm sorry. I hate them. I know. But they're here. I do too. But I do hope that our listeners feel the same way. If you love a podcast enough, like you're going to be okay with the ads. Because I think of, like just yesterday, I listened to Smart List for the first time in forever, which is like one of my favorite pods right now. I mean, it's everyone's favorite podcast right now. But they have ads that even though I adore all three of them, I was annoyed. Yeah. I was like rolling my eyes, but I stuck through it because I was like, I'm going to hear the rest of this interview with America's sweetheart, Jennifer Garner. So, <laughs> Ooh, I, I should listen to that episode. I fucking love Jennifer Garner. Did you? She oh. is a ama- mate. She's she just is. the best. Okay. We could go on forever. She's such Did a Did you watch their HBO show? I haven't it's yet. Really good. I like I have no reason not to, but it's yeah. great. It, maybe it's because I was binging Black Mirror like a I know. Psychopath. I still have one episode left, but this might be my favorite season. I haven't seen an episode I don't like yet. Okay. Thank you. I'm seeing a lot of people attack uh Lock Henry. Lock Henry two is my favorite one. Being, but everyone's saying it's not Black Mirror because it doesn't really like have the technology aspect. And I was like, but it does with the camera. That's all I'm gonna say because I don't yeah. want to spoil it for people. But anyway, it's I do okay, agree I, that I it's, that it's kind of. different. Yeah. It's diff- it's, it goes off the beaten path and it's sort of like, okay, you're like really trying here. But it's such a good episode. I just, 
maybe people want it to be on like be its own yeah. show or its own movie and not be Black Mirror, which I can understand. But gosh, I agree with you. It's my favorite you. one. I so fucking good. loved it. I, w- I was legitimately freaked out. I was so I was scared. So Same. Nervous. It was so suspenseful. <laughs> It was so suspenseful. I got, I literally paused it to go get a blankie (laughs) so that I could hold it it, like just up to under my eyes. And like I was peeking in and out. It was, it was really, really good. Everyone should check out the new season of Black Black Mirror. It's really great. But we've got a lot of weird stories for you today. So let's just hop right into it. Lauren, you're first. Seatbelts, everyone. Please let this be a normal field trip. Let's ride the magic school bus with Miss Frizzle. How does the Magic School Bus song go? There's an actual song. I don't know it. We never sing it. I don't know it. But I don't know it. And that's why. (laughs) It's probably illegal for us to sing it anyway, but we're joining Miss Frizzle on the Magic School Bus. Like Ashley said last time she did the segment, for some reason we always ride it into the human body when it shrinks down. You know, it's the only place it goes in our heads. We're going into the human body to talk about something called human hibernation, uh, which also goes a little into evolution, which we had such a fun oh, episode God. with Joe yeah. on last season. Love that episode. Go listen to it if you haven't, but talking about it a little bit. So the reason I even came across this topic is kind of embarrassing <laughs> because it was all to do with how annoyed I was with the cold weather in Los Angeles. Cold. Right. 60 degrees, as we know, but I mean, cloudy, gloomy, depressing. And it was just like the lack of sunshine that we're promised living here, paying this rent (laughs) and thinking about if we ever move back to the Midwest or to Pittsburgh, where Alex is from, like we'd have to deal with winters. And I was just like, man, wouldn't it be nice if we could hibernate? And then I thought, why don't humans hibernate? Is this a thing? So doing a little research, we don't hibernate, Obviously. obviously, like other mammals, but... There is some evidence to point to that we may have once upon a time back in the day. Well, yeah. But clearly, yeah, but due to evolution, we no longer do. But humans or human-like ancestors that we had most likely did because researchers are starting to gather more evidence and science to aid in this and how we could possibly hibernate again. But, sorry, I just feel a scratch in my throat. It's okay, I need a drink too. It's this three weeks of like coughing and scratchy voice. It's awful. Okay. For both medical purposes and possible space travel, as Mm. we've heard about before, hibernation or some sort of sleep for humans would be incredible and it would help us explore so much more. It would be huge for the medical world and the science world. But And it'd help us get through these harsh winters. It would help me take a little nap in a blanket. I might be the one that's like, I'll sleep through the summer and meet you guys in the fall. That's true. You hate it's the so summer. It's so hot. I'm still blotting oh, sweat but then off my face. And see, I would want to do it during the winter, but then we'd miss each other for two whole mm-hmm. seasons. So I'll have, I might have to join you in the summer. I don't like being sweaty either. Do I just hate I just want to be, I just want to be 70 fall. degrees. I don't want to be anything 70, higher. sunny, I don't a light. Be anything lower. I just want to be 70. A light breeze. A light breeze. That's what I'm asking for. Okay. Anyway, so we don't we don't hibernate anymore, but we once did. Our ancestors did. So it's like, well, this could maybe happen again. Let's see how we can bring that back up in our body. So to back up into the evolution part, just briefly getting into the history, we have found evidence saying that our prehistoric ancestors were able to. At first, it was just a theory, but evidence has come up, which I can't even begin to understand how, how this was studied. <laughs> I know. I was like, that could be a whole other Did you other bring a mummy back to life and ask it? <laughs> like, how the fuck like, would you who? figure this out? It's the same with that a couple episodes ago when I was talking about, like, sunstorms. And it was like, we found out that we had a sunstorm in the Ice Age. And it's like, how the fuck did we how? find that out? How'd Who'd you know you that? ask? <sighs> Tree rings. Tree rings. <laughs> but, God. <laughs> it's the answer to everything. But um, they figured it out, and again, that could be a whole other episode, but they were able to hibernate, and so there's a good chance we could have the genetics within us for it to Mm. happen again, and there's a ton more research to be done. Sorry to say this probably won't be happening anytime soon, but I love that there is, there is a, totally, there is a research team assigned to this, and that makes me excited as the lazy wannabe bear in a Mm -hmm. cave that I am. I am just like, I love that this is happening. And as recent as 2020, it has pointed to these early mammals 
confirmed being able to survive harsh winters, which then points to the human-like ancestors being able to survive it, and they believe that it's happening even with the new one. Oh, it's ring light. I'm being glowed upon. Sorry. <laughs> the, hu the human race probably had, you know, the hibernation in them to survive extreme weather, surviving an asteroid hitting the Earth. Maybe they were able to go underground and mm. go into sleep, surviving anything. So that is how we have made it this far. And we might still have the power, but how could we bring it back? Um, that's what we're going to get into in a minute. But here first are the evolutionary reasons why scientists believe that it left us. Because being in hibernation or state of torpor would mean you aren't able to reproduce. Big no-no. Yeah. Because us humans need to be around forever and rule everything in the world. So, huge no-no. And side note, torpor is when animals shut down their metabolic processes, such as breathing, circulation, energy use. They lower their body temperature to below 91 degrees or Fahrenheit or 33 degrees Celsius. And torpor is typically very short-term, lasting fewer than 24 hours. Hibernation is then this prolonged period of torpor that animals use to survive seasonal changes. And <laughs> food scarcity. So it's torpor, but lasting longer than 24 hours. So just wanted to get that up out of the way. And temperature drops way, way low. Negative 27 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 3 degrees Jeez. Celsius. Saving up 90% of the energy. So that is torpor and hibernation, which I will be discussing. But, okay, so back to if you're not reproducing, it means other competitor species are going to attack you and take your place and then we'll be extinct and when you're in torpor you cannot defend yourself from predators you just or asteroids or whatever it may be so you're just trying to survive and that is why it went out the window over years and years and years and years so now back to the present how can we usher this back in then if it happened once for us where are we at well medical professionals believe since they use therapeutic hypo Thermia, mm. which is a way of lowering the body temperature and slowing down metabolic processes like blood circulation and breathing. Since they use that already, this could kind of be the doorway that okay. takes us back in. They treat at-risk people, such as people who have experienced physical trauma, those receiving a transplant, and people undergoing surgery. So this is already happening, and yes, it is very different from torpor or hibernation, but it is believed to be kind of the gateway into what we need. Another approach might be finding a way to trigger the same processes that other mammals use. Our animal friends, how do they reach torpor and why can't we? But it's not clear if we can do that because just because they can. But and animals reach torpor and hibernation in totally different ways. So we have to kind of look at the temperatures of circumstances. But bats, mice, lemurs, all the little tiny guys go into torpor daily, oh. which I didn't know. Like, they can go into that less than 24 hours little sleep by lowering everything down. And I'm just imagining them curling into Oh, they little totally ball, curl up in a little, little ball. Mice. And you can't convince me otherwise. <laughs> so they're going into torpor and other mammals can hibernate for six months Wild. through autumn and winter and in a hibernation study i was oh, gonna yes. say which by the way does not mean that they go to sleep for six months because that's what mm -mm. i always thought growing up same that they just slept straight for six months didn't pee poop eat fuck, big old nothing. nap um <laughs> they do uh but they still it's do mostly sleeping which it is a lot of sleeping, but they can lovely. still get... That is what I'm saying. Thank you for understanding that. And that is such a valid point. It's not just sleeping. It is a lot of sleeping, but they can get up and do some of their regular functions. But it's like their body is totally... It's regulated in just a totally different way. They're a lot more comatose in yeah. that way. But um, in a hibernation study from 2007, we learned the pygmy possum was able to hibernate for up to a year in laboratory Crazy. conditions. Oh. But just to show, I know, so that is a little different. But one, the smaller animals, it seems like, can handle it from what we learned from that. And seeing if they make it perfectly perfect in a lab, if they can do it, then the next thing will be to move on to, can humans achieve this as well? Another theory is that we can achieve hibernation via slow wave sleep, which is something that we go through every single night. It's for a very brief time, but it's something that our brains do that does lower our metabolic rate and body temperature. And even though, even though, even though, 
even though we don't experience it for a very long time, it is like hibernation okay. status or torpor. And so slow wave sleep is another one of those things where it feels like the gateway, just like the controlled hypothermia. So we have these foundations, these bases, the animals, our sleep, all of it. So it could go. Then how is this going to affect the world? What's really going to happen if we figure this out? Well, actually what could happen I think is so cool. So according to several studies, human-induced torpor or hibernation could be crazy for space exploration or medicine, as we said, but being able to sleep for long periods could cut down on like the time it takes to study anything in space. It could help people survive very intense surgeries that right now are so risky to do that some doctors will not even do them. They'll have to like ship you off to a specialist. It could treat cancerous tumors. It could help people who are coming out of any kind of trauma. I think I mentioned that earlier, but it is just a better chance of survival all around. If the wow. body can go into the state, it is not just like, I think this might help a surgery or two. It's like, this could change medicine in so many ways. It could help. Would it help like injuries heal? be treated more effectively? Yes. It helps the healing time. Right. That's the other thing. It's like, it is so much, it's so much goodness for the body. So in the medical world specifically, um, it could also help emergencies like heart attack, stroke, blood loss, and transplants. Controlled hypothermia could lead to all of this. And then going the extra mile, it could help bounce back, like you just said with the healing. Resilience during transplant surgery is the biggest one, which like I currently am going through that with my uncle. I don't know if I even told you this, Ashley. I might have, but... My uncle of my cousin, Rachel, who's right. been on who's the, been show on the show before, she was and this is on for yeah. artificial intelligence. Yes. Oh my gosh. Such a good episode. I do think I told you, but yeah. listeners it's, it's public news. This is important for you too, but she little sweetheart, my cousin, Rachel was on the show on that episode and she was supposed to get married this year and they had to put it off because her dad is, ha had to have a bone marrow transplant Oof. surgery and which is one of Very the roughest invasive. ones. And the surgery itself is slightly easier than some other surgeries, but the recovery is like worst of the worst. So I feel like this is one of the ones that they are like really looking at. And I just, they keep sending updates, which have been amazing. They're keeping in touch with like all family and friends sending updates, but everyone I read, I'm just like, this is so brutal. So that's another reason I think this is so cool. I think transplant surgery would change forever. It can, this can also prevent muscle wasting, any kind of atrophy and osteoporosis in people with limited mobility. Mm. It can prevent entire body or single organ shock, which is amazing. It can cause cancers to be dormant until better treatment options are available, which is freaking huge. And it can potentially even battle diseases that affect the memory like Alzheimer's, which I think is important. Just last week we were talking about yeah. this, how Alzheimer's and dementia are just so upsetting because they are the ones that we just do not know what to do about. Basically you can prolong life, but you can't really treat it. So it could be really huge for Alzheimer's as well. Um, so this all sounds lovely. I'm like team hibernation. Let's figure it out for the space world. Um, a 2017 article came out where researchers considered the benefits of torpor for space flights to Mars and its moons, and the authors proposed that we need to bring therapeutic hypothermia into space exploration, which could probably happen sooner than some of the other medical applications, so that could be really cool. But it would cut down on the use of life support and other resources that you have to use while aboard, reduce water and food intake by up to 75%, which is huge. Yeah. Reduce waste, production, amazing, protect against radiation, incredible, and ease psychological concerns associated with long-term space flight, including being confined with several people yep. over a long period of time, which is what makes me feel I can itchy barely have a room if I were to ever so. do it. I can, yeah. In a place and I that count I can my husband leave. as that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm like, no, I, I so get that. So I'm like, love that for everybody um, that they would be able to just be like sleep, which also I think of a black mirror episode with Josh Hartnett, who is so very handsome still, still to this day. So he hasn't handsome. changed. How is it possible? Mm. Mm. Yep. Anyway, so the risks, we have to talk mm. about the risks because I'm just sitting here like, right, let's do it. But getting humans into torpor hibernation, like, 
yes, the way getting into that can happen. And like, like I said, the research is there and this could happen maybe in our lifetime when we're old and gray, but how do you get humans out of torpor or hibernation? That is the dangerous Mm. part that hasn't been studied as much. We don't have a lot of information on that. And we need to understand how mammal bodies go into and safely out of torpor and brain studies on animals show that hibernating animals, they go between either sleep coma or kind of an anesthesia type place. And so we don't think humans can do those things. I don't know if we're capable of them. So it's sort of like we have to see if anything even close is something that humans can do. So I don't know. That's the part that gets a little iffy because humans' hearts don't do well when they come out of the cold. That's the biggest thing. It is so risky to play with the body temperature. Our hearts will fibrillate, and we can't make successful contractions that are needed to stay in this state for a long period of time. So that is the biggest research of, like, how can we have heart safety and let humans come out of it? But if that can be figured out, then we might be able to move forward. And NASA came out with a proposed protocol when they were talking about the space exploration, even though that one is like moving a bit further forward, they were saying the biggest risks are blood clots, bleeding, infections, electrolyte imbalance, glucose imbalance, fatty liver, liver failure. They had quite a long list. So they were like, figure this out first, maybe. Maybe. Meaning, I hope that wasn't too long-winded and boring. I am fascinated by this, so I hope everyone is too. But the main takeaway is, There is not evidence yet that humans can go into hibernation, but I say yet very loudly because it's been in our sci fi movies since the beginning of sci fi (laughs) movies. Okay, why don't we have it yet? I know they keep teasing us that you can just go in a capsule and sleep, so it better happen. And I do think it will, especially 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 what I just said, like spatial effects, (laughs) especially in space. Especially with the space, yeah. time. Science has not unlocked all the secrets yet, but gosh, I feel like they're getting closer we'll and closer. It and it's going to be given to the right people and not for idiots like me who just want to like curl up in a ball. But I'm still yeah, excited. Yeah, not for about me it. who's like, I'd like to skip summer if I may. I just want to skip a whole season. <laughs> you know, I was also thinking like uh, when we get to the point where overpopulation has become untenable, which. Mm -hmm. to be fair we're very close and not because we don't have enough resources but because such a small amount of people own so much own and control so much of the world's resources um and they're fucking evil Mm -hmm. and that's why orcas are destroying their yachts so but when overpopulation gets to the point where it's like this is untenable it might be a good thing if like seasonally a fourth of the population can go into hibernation. Go to sleep. So that our emissions are down and like power, power grids are. Save the environment. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, at this point, the major players aren't doing much about climate change. The major players aren't doing much about how our power grid in, in this country and in China are at max power. And could crap out yep. any minute. They're not doing much. Yep. Um, so mm-hmm. I imagine in order to keep burning their fossil fuels that put so much money in their pocket, they would absolutely mm-hmm. go for this before, you know, green. Going, going green. green in yeah. any way. It, yeah, yeah, isn't that so sleep funny that like... <laughs> This would be the solution solution. rather than like, let's make some changes. Let's make our our greener earth. It would be like, oh, we can put people to sleep for a while. We're going to use less of these resources. I know. That is so true. But hey, whatever is going to hook those billionaires in, let's Let's do do it. it, But yeah, science is just so cool. And our bodies are so so cool. cool. And it's, I mean, it's crazy that this could too happen. Too scary for me at this point, especially when you were like, here's the thing. We don't know how to get you out of it. It's like, what? No, that, it would just, it would just <laughs> be a permanent mean? sleep. <laughs> I know. I was so optimistic. And then it was just like, and then this. And then also, the we don't know how to end the stasis. Sorry. Sorry. So it's different though for reptiles because reptiles can legitimately like freeze their hearts can stop 
and they yeah, their that's blood the can thing. stop flowing. <laughs> And then in the spring, <laughs> it, the pond thaws and the frog's just like, Boo! and like goes back to work. Like mammals don't have that it's, ability. Yes, it's different. That's <laughs> why. And I, I think I said it a couple of times. This was specifically mammals. mammals. And I was mostly talking about like how we as mammals, why are we the ones that don't hibernate or go into a state of torpor? Like why? Yeah. So that was how this came to my brain. Literally because my lazy ass was like, why can't I hibernate can't I during sleep the winter? For six months? So, Listen. That's it. Yeah. Lizards are cray. Frogs are cray. Lizards and They're frogs are own. cray. Don't they? Okay. I'm going to go into a... There's two of them across the creek at the big rocks. This is not I don't know what that your was, but... typical <laughs> monster watch. This is like a historical monster watch. So imagine this monster watch Ooh. is like sepia colored and it's all dusty. <laughs> Just it Blowing off. the dust off Just of this off. monster watch. We love it. Here for sepia. Let's so, go. So today I wanted to talk about dragons. Mm. I love it. I love it. These love days it. everyone knows what a dragon is. There's a sexy dragon in Shrek. Goodness. There was, mm-hmm. oh rapey hbo show all about them i sure, believe the one that were the only two who the only it. two people in in america that didn't watch it apparently uh we all know what a dragon is smog we all know what a dragon is okay <laughs> yes of course but dragons weren't just invented for fairy tales and fantasy novels the legend of the dragon has been around since what seems like the beginning of time And what makes things even stranger is that it seems like every single culture developed their own legend of the dragon despite not having any contact with each other. Interesting. Did dragons exist at one point? How did this happen? How did everyone come up with the story of a dragon? If we have no fossil record of a a dragon ever existing. So who and how and and why? why? So first, a little history lesson. China has the longest continuous tradition of dragon stories that we know of dating back over 5,000 years. And their dragon imagery is also some of the most popular. You know, the colorful puppets and costumes you see in their New Year's celebrations. Yes, um, so beautiful. Ornaments on Chinese buildings. Every other bro in America has a Chinese dragon tattoo. And for good reason. For sure. (laughs) They're everywhere. They're hugely popular. They should be popular. They're gorgeous. Like the Chinese dragon is a gorgeous image. Truly. And Chinese dragons, being the oldest dragons, they actually symbolize good fortune. Like they brought rain during droughts. They symbolized rulers. Um, Of the 12-year Chinese zodiac, dragon years are the best. 1988, baby. Year of the dragon. Oh, you lucky. (laughs) You lucky gal. Yeah, you got me Love in that. a year of the dragon, so we know <laughs> yes. that they're special. A gift. It's a gift. <laughs> <laughs> the dragons of Chinese legend were actually sea creatures, too. They lived in oh. distant waters. They did not have wings. Like, you don't see any Chinese dragons with wings, but they could fly. Um, but they'd fly through the air the same way they slithered through the sea. And when you think about it, you could see it. You know how they're they're just sort of... <laughs> And yeah. it's not because a, a kite <laughs> Weaving can be around. made to look yes. like that. That's what they look like back then. And yeah, you can sure. actually see this throughout most Asian dragon imagery. Japan, Vietnam, etc. They all adapted from the ancient Chinese legend of the dragon. But okay, great. On the other side of the planet, Native Americans, Mayans, Aztecs, they had dragons too. So And India. India. India had dragons too. Wow. So, there were dragon legends in ancient Mesopotamia, even in the book of Job in the Bible. um, The God of Israel vanquished the Leviathan, which was a creature that was a cross between a whale and a snake. Greek mythology includes several battles with serpent monsters, and in these legends, the creatures could breathe fire. So now we've got fire breathing introduced to it. And as you can see, we've gone from dragons being a symbol of good fortune and protection to a dangerous beast that needs slaying, but it's still a freaking Mm -hmm. winged reptilian creature. Right. 
So it kept some of its same look, but then changed yeah. into But eventually people stuff were like, I'm tales. afraid of this now. So what's right. going on here? Well, there are a few theories, and none of them are that dragons were real once. Sorry to all the nerds mm. out there. It doesn't seem... Sorry, Lord of the Rings fans. <laughs> are there dragons in Lord of the Rings? Smaug! I don't know. Well, he was in The Hobbit. Oh, right, 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 right. Yes. Still Lord of the Rings. Benedict Cumberbatch. Benedict right? Cumberbatch. Remember all the videos of him crawling around like <sighs> so silly. But what a great and performance. As, as much as I know, I'm like, I respect the performance, but I, I listen, giggled. I couldn't do I giggled it. Giggled a lot at those. Uh-uh. That would just be a silly, silly time. So mm-hmm. <laughs> one mythologist named Joseph Campbell was a huge fan of Carl Jung's ideas, and he actually points to one of my favorite theories. The collective consciousness. It is Mm. possible that we all are truly connected. So when ancient people on one continent were dreaming of dragons, people on another continent were as well. Oh, beautiful. Mm -hmm. I love that. (laughs) But again, who dreamt of them first and why? This is a little easier to determine probably because when you look at a dragon... It's basically all the scariest things in one. Um, At least scary to early man, like what we were. I'm talking like early monkey men when we were still Uh half ape. Our ape ancestors would have been very fearful of snakes, very fearful of large winged birds. And if they were Mm -hmm. on a continent with things like lions, they'd be scared of those as well. So if you took the head of a lion, the body of a snake, and the wings and talons of a giant bird, bada bing, bada boom, you've got yourself a nice dragon. Dragon. So you just combine all the scary things, and you've got all the fears together. There's also another possibility. That makes sense. Bones, because fossils of dinosaurs have been around long before the first documented fossil was found in Europe in 1677, sorry, 1677. So it's definitely possible that these ancient civilizations stumbled upon a dinosaur fossil or two in their time that led them to believe Mm -hmm. giant lizards did once exist. Not to mention the fact that alligators, crocodiles, monitor lizards, these things were still around, and they're pretty scary when you see them. And especially if you don't know the etymology of the animal, you don't know that that's an uh, an adult. It could be a baby. Right. You don't know how big they get. (laughs) Holy shit. That is terrifying. That is so real. Yeah. And then without the methods that we use today to date fossils, like how were they to know that the bones were ancient and not something that was still alive but very elusive? In the present right. time. Just hiding so in the bushes. Way. Definitely could have been dinosaur bones. But actually, they wouldn't have even had to find ancient dinosaur bones. Because have you ever seen the skeleton of a whale? No. Okay. Does it look like a dinosaur? It looks like a dragon. Or a dragon. It looks exactly like a dragon. But that makes sense, though. The way the tail goes. Like the huge ass body huge tail the big head but like these people didn't have national geographic or the discovery channel they didn't see whales in the ocean occasionally they they might see them surface and spray water or occasionally they might find their bones and a whale skeleton makes them look so much scarier than they are okay that feels like the best answer, to be honest. Like, now that I'm thinking of what a whale skeleton would be, it would be that exact shape of what we see dragons as mm-hmm. today. And the thing is, like, you don't have to go to the, the current ocean to find a whale skeleton. Whale, whale skeletons are found everywhere because the planet used to be covered in water. Right. So, so they could you know, wash ashore <laughs> They could anywhere. wash ashore. They could have died a long time ago. Like, and so, the, yeah. yeah. There are a lot of people, though, who still believe dragons were once real, um, but that's just not supported by science. So Sorry. Again, sorry, nerds, but we love you. We love you so much, but I don't think it ha- happened on this planet. On this we planet. Love so much, we love you, you so much. the way you said it was so real. much, like, but no. No, honey. Some people think it's possible they were real on another planet before we lived on this one or another dimension no, I... before we lived in this one and our ancient ancestors passed that knowledge down and down and down until they were just fantasy. But I love that. Also a stretch. So mm-hmm. 
Yeah, dragons could be a case of mistaken identity, or they could be something that's created in our subconscious due to thousands of years of evolution. And if that's the case, what's interesting, if our society were to crumble, it will, and our modern civilization were to fall, which it will, eventually, would the next civilization also create a dragon in their subconscious? Like, would we pass it on? Yeah. Because it was passed on to us, maybe. Possibly. I like it. Get Who knows? I think, I think it would. I like to think it would. Oh, my gosh. That is why our ancestors used to hibernate. They thought dragons were skulking around there. Yeah, they were <laughs> like, you know connected. what comes out in the winter? Dragons. dragons. All right? So we're going our in this cave. Our stories are always connected, Ashley. <laughs> This is it. Because that was the thing. Like, all the research is like, well, I bet they hibernated because, like, they knew something crazy was about to happen, either an asteroid or a dinosaur. They might have thought the dinosaur was riding the asteroid, and that kind of combines to be a dragon. I don't know. I'm just saying. It all connects. (laughs) (laughs) I want to do each other's sound effects anytime the other takes a drink. Um, that is fascinating and so great. Mm -hmm. And yay dragons, I guess. Yay (laughs) dragons. And with that, we move into, what time is it? True crime time. It's our vacation. What time is it? Time of our lives. That's right. Scream and shout. I don't remember the high school musical lines fully, but it's something along that. Ma'am, I don't know them at all. So I, you could make it up and I wouldn't. No one's going to question you. You wouldn't bat an eye. I know. I loved it the last time we did True Crime Time because you thought I was writing a song and I, like, I should have wow, never outed great. myself. And you're like, oh, it's from high school musical. And I was like, oh, okay. Stinks. Um, true Crime Time, everybody. True Crime but Time. Oh. I will say, because last time I was so depressing as I always am, there is no, this. it's still a sad story. So sorry. But there's no death okay. in this one. So it's it's different. It's different than what we're used to, and it's mysterious. There is not a lot out there on it. I think because there is some sensitive material involved with one person's mental health and abilities, but anyway, I know. So also this involves siblings being the worst. So I wanted to give a huge shout out to Julia and Danny on my end, Jamie on Ashley's end. Like anytime we've been in a fight with you, at least you didn't treat us like the sibs in this story. I tell you what. Oh God. Okay. I know. (laughs) Like, Damn. (laughs) So there was a man named, there is a man, because again, there's not a death. I just want everyone to be happy with that. A man named Carlos, whose last name still remains unknown, one of the first mysteries. Um, But Carlos, we know, was discovered by Spanish police in December of 2015. Police had been called to a local bar in the city of Dos Hermanas in Spain, and the brother of Carlos had been drunk and creating a huge scene at the bar. Police asked if they could escort the brother home, which he agreed to. Mm. But then once they were at his home, they noticed a dove coat with a padlock on it. And if you're like me saying, what the hell is a dove coat? (laughs) I had to look it up. A dove coat is a medieval looking structure designed to hold pigeons and doves. It's like a giant bird cage that a bunch of pigeons are in. Dove coat. Um, They typically have holes in the side so that the birds can build nests, and the dovecoats are generally attached to sides of houses or barns, which in the case it was attached to the house. So they were looking at that, and police spoke with the sister, but they felt like she was being strange and trying to avoid them, and just she was sketchy all around. Then they asked to speak with the third sibling, Carlos, to which both of the siblings responded very poorly and tried to make excuses. But after hours of conversation because the police were like we're not leaving there's something up here how did they know there was a third sibling because they did like research on the house they were like who lives here and it was like i know that you have a third sibling named carlos yeah so the siblings eventually let police inside the dovecoat and they unlock the padlock that was on top of it it was a very like private weird thing and they escorted the police through a second door that led them to stairs that then took them up to a secret loft Another door blocked the loft, but once inside, police found a very sick man. Twas Carlos, the third sibling. Okay. Carlos was lying naked in a bed that had been soiled countless times. Filthy, disgusting. 
Around him were numerous buckets of his urine and feces. Carlos was incredibly thin and malnourished and covered in bed sores, head to toe, in horrific condition. Police immediately had Carlos taken to a nearby hospital. They were like, get him treated right away. He had infections, you know, the malnourishment, everything. So they were like, just get him out of here. And while he was in the hospital, doctors confirmed from medical records that Carlos had not been even in a doctor's office, hospital aside, like to see a medical professional since 1996. And this is 2015. Oh, my God. That is assumed to be the year that his siblings first locked Carlos away in that dove coat. He was there all those damn years. Roughly 20 years he had been trapped in there. That is horrific. Horrible. I'd rather so, someone died. I mean, honestly, like, <laughs> I guess I wasn't saving any of you anything because it's no. still so terrible. Oh, my gosh. So police return to the brother who is 76 and the sister who is 61. These are all oh, adult shit. They're siblings like at this point. Elderly. Yeah. Okay. They're elderly now. Yeah. And like this was their youngest sibling. So for 20 years he was in there and I think I have his age towards the end. But either way, it's like he was young when this all began. Yeah. Um, they have not been named again in this case. Like a lot of the names have been taken away, but. They go back to them and ask why they had kept their brother in the stove coat, and they told police that he was so mentally ill they had to keep him in there for his own safety and for their safety. Okay. And obviously, mentally you can't just ill. Trap how? Someone. I know. I'm like, okay, tell us more. Like, who was told he Ted you that Bundy? it was okay? I know. I'm like, <laughs> was he? Did he have murderous tendencies? Nobody else seems to say that. You can't just trap someone for two decades. No. Morally or legally, in a dove coat, a pigeon cage, essentially. So the brother and sister were immediately arrested um, on illegal detainment of a person and then crimes against a person and abuse, of course. Um, Carlos was 59 when he was discovered. So he started in there like around 38, 39. Uh. And it's just like, he yeah, had so much life to live that was just taken away from him in this. Um, his brother and sister had been bringing him food and water, I say, with quote, air quotes, and medicine during his imprisonment, but, I mean, not very much. And they never let him out once, would just bring him new buckets occasionally, but just allowed him to be covered in filth. And the room he was kept in was a three foot by three foot room. No room to move around, really, barely breathable air Good in these Lord. inhumane conditions. Um, the neighbors in the area, which they lived on, like, a large plot of land, farmland, so nobody was super, like, right next to them in the defense of the neighbors, but also neighbors said in interviews after this case made the news, saying they kept their distance from the siblings because the siblings were known to be very rude. Some even called them evil, like, just something dark was around them. They were, well, like, not involved in the community know? at all. Like, yeah. Everyone always had an idea about them of like, oh, they're so awful to interact with, like just get belligerent and mean and all of the things. So, and the siblings said on the other side, they avoided the community in general because they were like, nobody understands us and like they don't get our family. So they just kind of kept to themselves. And because of their isolation, that is why Carlos went undiscovered for far too long. But now one of them had to get drunk at the bar and let it loose. So the brother and sister were charged for their crimes. They were taken to jail for just a couple of days and then were released because, similar to so many awful cases, there was just more evidence to be collected. There was more that was needed. So they were released until prosecutors could gather more. But during their release, both siblings fled and nobody, like, really knows their whereabouts today. Like, probably took on new names, possibly fled the country, who knows. But nobody can really find where they are at. I'm sure they went into hiding. I understand why they did. But damn, I want them to be brought to justice. And Carlos, luckily, the little glimmer of hope we have is that Carlos, luckily, is nowhere near his siblings. We know that he was treated for his physical and mental health for many years. He had to be rehabilitated. And now... I think is in some sort of assisted living program or was yeah, sent to live imagine. with like a distant relative. Again, like the case has been kept private because of his, I mean, 
he does have, you know, mental health issues and he's possibly on the spectrum in some way. So I think they were just trying to keep this as sensitive as possible, but they know that he is now safe and has been treated for everything that happened for him. But, oh my gosh, I was going to say, could he even talk anymore? Barely. Yeah. I like they had to get, luckily the brother and sister were forthcoming with information eventually, but I just hate that they weren't able to ever be charged for what they did. I still kind of hope they will be, but I mean, with their older age, they'll most likely just die wherever they're at, which whatever, I guess being on the run for life also isn't the most fun life. So that can be punishment. Yeah. In itself, at least they're not like living it up. Cause it obviously it doesn't know. sound like they were like super affluent or anything. No, just hiding their brother in a cage because they didn't know how to control whatever he was going through just, mentally, like, which just is, him. yes, it was just so sad. I couldn't believe that. Which, here's the thing though, what if he's a fucking monster? Like I said I earlier, what if he is Ted Bundy? What if he, like, what if he, like, I, is someone who needed to I be agree. locked up? I do agree, but I feel like I we would it. have heard about that. Like, I feel yeah. like there would have been a follow-up to the case. Like, listen, you know that guy who was locked in the pigeon cage? He just slaughtered an entire yeah, town of people. I just DNA feel like something matched would have come out. A, a serial rapist, but... Totally. Yeah, no, and from what totally people say... Innocent. What people say about these siblings, like, both the town, the community, and, like, more distant family members, it sounds like the older siblings were very much, like, the worst. It sounds like they were just, the monsters. They just wanted to be selfish and we're like, we don't really know what to do with you. But yeah, it's just one of those cases that because it was in Spain, because there's not a lot out there, I hadn't even heard of that, but then was like, oh my God. Good this Lord. Is terrible. And now I know what a dove tail is. What is it? <laughs> dove coat. Dove I mean, coat. fair. Dove coat. I'm pretending I'm like, <laughs> now I, I know knew. what a go- dove, dove, dove coat, coat is. Well, God bless Carlos. Speaking mm-hmm. of being stuck in a place, we should say. That our our thoughts and our prayers go out to the five Ooh, the people submarine. who are literally stuck, stuck, trapped in a submarine at the bottom of the ocean right now. Holy shit! I hate the story so much. The more I read about it, and especially because I watched one interview with a guy who was like on the ground floor of this thing being created, mm-hmm. and he basically said. If you want to be optimistic about this case, here's like one way it could turn out okay, but most likely it's this. And I was like, oh, no. And also, it was pieced together by things from Camper World. Yeah. For anyone who doesn't know what we're talking about, five individuals went down on an expedition in a submersible, not a submarine, a submersible, which means it doesn't have power to go up and down. It's most likely on a wire of some kind. They went down to see the Titanic wreck, and um, we haven't heard from them since Sunday morning. So I it's think, not great. I think like six or seven hours ago, I saw something saying they had forty hours of oxygen left, and that's if yeah. something didn't happen to them you know, already. Them already, um, they are like if if they're still alive, they're just sitting down there. Um, just waiting. And the thing because, is bolted yeah, shut from the outside. So even they if they no managed way of out. to get to the surface, even if they managed to stuck. float up, they can't get out without someone getting them out. So it's a really terrifying situation um, and a good lesson. Yeah, don't go down in something that's controlled by, oh, this is another thing. It's controlled by, like, a game a video game remote control. Remote. Yeah, video game control. I can't. Because <laughs> that was... cost those people $250,000 each to do this, so. I know. I mean, I, I obviously... my judgments I do not... to myself. I know. I'm like, I'm not wishing death upon any human. Never. Obviously, I want them to be okay. But there were so many comments online that were like, and this is... <laughs> Why the orcas are attacking. It's the rich people, which I was like, okay, relax. That is a very dark joke to make. It is. Because I I do not want to find out that these people have passed. But it is also like they paid so much money to go down in a, like, a submersible, as you said, that is not, it does not seem safe. There's not even seats in there. Zero regulations. You're just sitting on the floor. Sitting on the ground. I mean, it's a Peeing and pooping everywhere. Anyways, moving on. Moving Anywho, on to something I know. 
Lord. Even lighter? Nope. It's horrible. Well, here's the thing. Some oh, people the may love this. Some people may love this because some people are fucking weirdos. And I love ya. Okay. Get ready. It's our brand new segment. Jeepers, creepers. Better grab your sneakers. Jeepers, creepers. Better run and hide. This is our new segment, Jeepers Creepers. God, I hate this so much. And I Ooh. am so sorry about this. I just learned some stuff, and now I have to share it. And this is the place where I share my weird stuff. And I just Good hate Lord. that it's come to this. <sighs> Fine. Today, I'm talking about tarantulas. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. First off, let me right, say. Fine. I'm not a person who screams and runs when they see a spider. Usually, I just let them go live their life and I ask them nicely, just like, don't crawl on me. I ask so little of you in my home. For sure. One request, do not crawl on me. Yeah. Don't crawl in my mouth when I'm sleeping. Don't crawl in my mouth when I'm sleeping. Don't crawl across my toes when I'm walking. Just don't touch me. Mm -hmm. You can do your thing. Right. If it's a big mamma jamma, I might see if Joe will kindly remove him or her, but I usually don't tell Joe because Joe will murder them immediately. He does not have a bug that I have. Yeah, see, Alex, I am Joe and Alex <laughs> is you, so I call Alex when they're bigger ones because even though I want to smash them into guts, I start, I've started to feel bad because of my husband who's nice, so he comes out and like escorts them <laughs> to, to the, the outdoors. In a safe way. So I've started to call him. So more, I am not a person crush who is like, ah, when it comes to spiders. That being said. Which is great. I do not care for tarantulas. Neither. They're too big. And I don't like that the fur. I don't like it. Uh, I don't like wolf spiders. I don't think, I don't like anything bigger than, <gasps> let's just say, <sighs> one quarter. And that counts Please. the legs. Okay. <laughs> They just, they creep me out so much. But I decided yeah. I wanted a little immersion therapy. Not to the point of touching or being near one. Okay. But like I okay. wanted to read up a little bit. Um, see if I can ease my heebie-jeebies. And I couldn't. But I do want to share some things I learned because it's really fascinating. So I'm going to quiz you on tarantulas and see how much you know about them. Wouldn't that be fun? No. Okay. Sure. Lauren. How long do tarantulas live? 80 years. Jesus Christ. No. <laughs> Males. <laughs> I just assumed that it would be an answer what that bug made me lived mad. 80 years. <laughs> I thought it was going to be something that I hated. Okay. Well, here's the thing. It's not great. Males live about 10 years. That's a lot. That's too long. Yeah. <laughs> but females can live. Almost 30 years. See? Awful. Yeah. All right. But it's, it's not 80. That was a lot. 80 was ridiculous. That was, that a was ridiculous absurd. Guess. It was absurd for sure. Okay. But 30. I'm not going to live 80 years. <laughs> I, me either. 30 sucks, though. 30 okay, sucks okay. a lot. Perfect. Okay. Lauren, how big can a tarantula get? Are we going like inches here? Yeah. We'll Probably. say inches. Seven inches long. Very good. Most tarantulas are about five. Five okay. inches. That's close. And that's about four inches too many. But some sure, tarantulas sure, sure, sure. have been measured to have a leg span of ten inches. <clears throat> which would be about the size of a dinner plate. And that's when I go straight to hell. No. I'm asking oh. no questions. I'm just going gagging, straight down. Gagging. Okay, <clears throat> Lauren, where do tarantulas live? Not geographically. Like, where do they set up their homes? Log, logs. Logs, trees, wood. You know what? A log, like a hollow log would actually be a good place for a tarantula. A Most spot? tarantulas prefer to burrow. Okay. And they don't usually make webs. But they do, female tarantulas do use their silk to decorate <laughs> and or Jeez. more so reinforce the walls of her burrow. And male tarantulas will spin 
basically like a welcome mat right outside the entrance of his burrow to alert him of any Intruders. visitors. Mm-hmm. But some tarantulas, some like the pink toe tarantulas in South America, spend most of their time in trees, which is so much worse. They need to be near my stompers. They need right. to be near my boots. Like up in the trees, that's making it too dangerous. Because they could like, fall on they, you. They're coming too close. Yeah, I don't want one to fall on my head. I don't want it oh anywhere near my face. Oh, okay, fine. You almost <laughs> touched on this. Lauren, what are tarantulas covered in? Little hairs. Little and hairs. I- it's actually, and eyeballs. Well, and eyeballs. No shit. Yeah, it's what actually is it not really? hair. I assumed. I was like, there's no way it's actually fur. <laughs> it looks like hair. Mammals' but... hair and our hair is made up of keratin. But tarantulas are still arachnids. So what seems like a bunch of hair is actually just exoskeleton. It's really thin exoskeleton. And oh. they're supposedly very soft and velvety to the touch. But not that I'll ever know. I will never touch one. Yep. But tarantulas, like like scorpions and snakes, they have to basically shed their skin. They molt. Right. So bugs and arachnids have an exoskeleton, unlike mammals who are skeletons on the inside. And they will eventually crawl out of their skeleton like a fresh, squeaky, clean, boneless baby. And they will do this like five times a year when they're younger. But an older tarantula may only need to do it once a year. It's how they're able to grow as creatures that have an exoskeleton. Okay. Sometimes. <laughs> I'm sweating. I'm uncomfortable. I'm legitimately sweating. I'm upset. Sometimes a tarantula could lose a limb in the molting process, but apparently that's fine because it'll just grow it back. Like the next time it molts, it'll have a little nub in. And then it'll the nub will grow and grow with each molt until he's got a new leg again. And apparently, tarantulas have been known to eat their own legs when they fall off, in Fuck order off. to not lose any protein. So that's also horrible. Stupid. It's so. As stupid. I said, I did this research to try and help myself be less scared of them, and what happened was I got more scared of them. I'm very upset. And I, people want to keep them as pets. We'll literally keep them as pets. Okay, what's the next question? What are tarantula's modes of defense slash how do they hunt? Can they, like, spit poison onto people and trap them? Oh, my God. Kind of. Oh. Well. So. They spit something onto people. mm, Or not people. People. And people. But. Mostly so, little guys. First of all, they're active hunters. So unlike other spiders that like weave a See, web and then wait too. for something. Yeah. To, that sucks too. That's what mm-hmm. I'm saying. Like that's even worse. Other spiders wait for something to get trapped in their web and then they're like, ha ha ha, spin it up and <sighs> suck it dry. Tarantulas use the little brother method, which is not the way I personally would describe it. Kissagator.com. <laughs> also that But website. here we are. Um, they sneak up and attack their prey from behind. Rude as hell. I will never not be looking over my shoulder. If never I turn mean, your back on a mother truck on a, tarantula. On a rancho. <laughs> uh, never. In terms of how they can hurt people, tarantulas can bite when threatened. Supposedly it feels like a, a bee or a wasp sting. It can feel like that afterwards as well, like with the irritation and burning. But they can also pull their hairy barbs of chitin off of their body and throw them at you like little ninja stars, which can cause a rash of varying degrees of severity based on whether or not you're allergic to them. And knowing me, I'm probably allergic to them. (laughs) The worst luck. It would just happen. But they won't cause any major harm unless... Okay. Unless... They throw them into your eyes. In 2009, a 29-year-old unnamed man in England went to the hospital after three weeks of red, watery, light-sensitive eye problems. And after antibiotics didn't help, they went and examined the eye under high-magnification lenses and found hair-like projections sticking into his cornea. 
And the patient immediately was like, oh, it's probably tarantula hair because right before my eyes started hurting, I was cleaning my tarantula tank and it threw hairs at me. (sighs) (laughs) The fact that you even have that answer ready to go, like probably when my tarantula threw its its hair hair at me, silly old guy. I forgot. What a dope. Oh, gosh. I try to be respectful to all of our listeners and weirdos, but if any of you are out there, like, holding your tarantula as you listen to this, I am upset with you, and I have a lot of questions. Okay, go ahead. I'm upset with you. I'm worried about you. Well, the tarantula hairs are just in there forever now because they're too small to remove, even with the tiniest of forceps. You can't. Not without, like, major damage. And apparently this isn't a rare thing. A woman sued a pet shop. In 1996 for not disclosing this information to her before she bought a tarantula for her daughter and she's effectively blind in the eye where the hairs embedded themselves. No. (sighs) Ooh, I am on that lady's side. I would sue as well. Two more questions. One, Lauren, are tarantulas slow or fast? Fast. Mm. Generally. Tarantula is moving a very slow and plodding way. Thank God. I know. I was like, I was guessing something worse to hopefully be corrected. Okay. Apparently they're pretty blind and they sense the world through the vibrations they feel in their legs and in those little hairs that aren't hairs all over their bodies. Good. You should be blind. Oh. While running, they can move four body lengths per second. And if it's particularly warm, like, you know, where they mostly live... They can move up to 10 body lengths per second, which is like 8 to 21 inches in a second, which here's the thing. I think that's fine because I'm pretty sure a human step is like two feet, which is 24 inches. We could still so beat them. I could right? lose them in three strides. Okay. I'm just like, if, can we outrun them? That is my biggest question. Okay, I'm going to be it running like so it. It fast. Like it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I dare him gonna to go, keep up with me. I'm going to go in zigzags like they say to do with gators. I'm going to do it all. Yeah. Maybe a straight line. Zigzag. Mm-hmm. Well. Hmm. I'm going to have to do more research. Final that question. That might only be for gators. <laughs> That's fine. Final question. Are tarantulas afraid of water? No. No, they're not, Lauren. <sighs> they're not afraid of water. I know. In fact. I knew it would be bad. Tarantulas have been filmed swimming and diving down and catching fish. So fuck me, I guess. They're going like, to go why for a nice it, swim. Why is it so much worse knowing they can swim? Like, where am I going to be? It is. Because you can't just take a little sprayer like you do with cats. <laughs> <laughs> can't just spray them. Where am I going to be that my option is to jump into a body of water to escape a tarantula? Like, it doesn't matter why it's worse. It's just worse. It just is. Yeah. You can't, it just is. Can't get into a body of water to escape them. They'll just follow you right in and probably be a phenomenal swimmer and, and get to you. They're just, they're as bad as I thought. Yeah. So even though I don't like tarantulas any more than I did before we started, in fact, I hate them so, so much. Yeah. I also feel a little bit better knowing that, one, they don't spin webs and live in trees in America. So the chance of one falling on me or, like, getting caught in their web or something. Right, 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 right. uh, Not likely. Also, (sighs) two, tarantulas here... In our part of the world are known as new world tarantulas. They're pretty docile and very rarely bite. You can poke them and push them. Mm. They're pretty chill. It's the old world tarantulas living in the streets of Africa and Asia. They are violent. They will bite first, ask questions later. I'm sure Australia has. I I don't trust any of those big ass spiders. The huntsman comes out of Australia, people or animals. I don't know why that was so hard. But please, oh. everyone, if you're like us and you fucking hate them, don't use this horrific information to fuel violence against tarantulas and other No, arachnids. I would never hurt them. They are all God's creatures. They kill other <laughs> bugs and pests for us. They aren't trying to harm us. But also, if there is a God, would there really be tarantulas? That's Has anyone saying, ever thought like, of that? Why are there tarantulas and why are there alligators? And no, I won't say the third one because you love them, but I'm afraid of them. I was going to say snakes. But I like, like snakes. Snakes are fine. I really like snakes. <laughs> Spiders and alligators. I don't like the bitey ones, though. I just like the... 
fair. Non-biting yeah, like ones. you're not gonna be like, look, a rattlesnake, take it home. No, I'm not even like super chill with boa constrictors. Mm-mm. Like constricting snakes. Too much. Yeah. Too, it's too much, guys. It's, it's too, too much. much. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, that was fun. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't it? Did everyone enjoy themselves? <laughs> Great. Great. Okay, well, now Love that it. we can all sleep soundly, that is all the time we have this week for Keep It Weird. Thank you so much for joining us for our creepy crawly chats this week. Make sure that you like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We would love to have a following here as well. And y'all can make that happen because the more subscribers we get, the more people will, that will see our YouTube channel or, you know, please. take our YouTube channel seriously or whatever. So please take the time to do that today if you would. And also follow us on social media at Keep It Weirdcast. Make sure you send in your funniest clip suggestions um, to keep it weird podcast at gmail.com or call them in to 626 686 1821. You will leave a voicemail. We will not answer. Don't be afraid of us answering. You will leave a voicemail. And as usual, that is so important to say, as somebody who say. also has phone anxiety, like you're not going to talk to anybody. Just a voicemail, Just guys. speak. Yeah, you can, you can write down what you want to say on a notepad. Yeah, and just read it. And as usual, please consider donating to our Patreon at www.patreon.com slash keepitweirdpodcast to help keep our show going. And in return, you'll get bonus episodes, a monthly newsletter written by us, discounts on merch and our Tee Public store. Um, And if you just want merch, you can actually go to keepitweirdpodcast.com slash merch, and that link will take you to the goods. And also, you'll get ad-free episodes. Look at that. Look at that. Look, Look at all at those that. goodies. But good. now, I like big bees, Uh-oh. itty bitty bees, Mississippi bees, inner city bees. Make a girl go crazy. It's time for Hive Mind. <laughs> Gosh, your hive mind intros get better by the week. Okay, hive mind is where Lauren and I test our psychic abilities. We were on a fucking roll until we weren't. So we Mm. are going to keep trying. We are using Zener cards today. Y'all know the shapes. There are no triangles. Do we? (laughs) Do we know the the shapes? Lauren is going to try and send me the psychic message. I also had a thought. Here's the thing. I'll tell you afterwards. I'll tell you. I'm going to show you a card. You are going to try and send me that card psychically. Are you ready? Yes. This is the card. Okay. Ready? Yep. Here we go. Is it a star? No. Damn it, it's a plus, plus sign. sign. Our powers no. are getting weaker. They are failing us. Oh my gosh. After doing so well for so I feel long. so weak inside. Stupid. Here was my theory. Sign. Okay, because I thought I was oh, going to yeah. get it. So my theory is kind of wrong. My theory, because the last two times you had to guess, you got it wrong. The last two times I had to guess, I got it right. And I thought maybe it's because I was holding it in my hand as well. I have had and that I was thought like, before. We have where I'm to like, get you some Zener I know, cards my own use. deck. I, I love that because I had that thought after last week where I was like, it'd be nice if I had a deck because what if that's affecting us? But then, mm-hmm. damn. But then I fucking got it wrong. So mm. maybe we're just not psychic. We've also known anytime it involves the star, whether it's the actual shape or you guess it, it curses us. So it's fine. You know what? I'm just going to take every star out of this deck. <laughs> just remove <laughs> the star. Fuck it. Okay, guys, oh, listen. So We're going to try it one more time last week with the flashing mes- method. See if we can get it back. If we can't, then we have to do some research and find a new, find way, a new way to strengthen our psychic mm-hmm. abilities. If you have any tips or tricks, you know where to find us send them in we'd like to hear from you but in the meantime have a wonderfully weird week and keep it it weird. weird is he talking about going to the potty yeah he just said, Mom, will you get my seat on the potty? That was the funniest thing. <laughs>
I cannot. 